Ever heard that Mike Keneally song called Potato from his album Sluggo and wondered what the heck is going on with the chords in that pre-chorus? Well, let's find out in this week's Analytical Music Theory Analysis of the Week. By the way, this is a segment from the Carl King Podcast. So if you enjoy this show, remember to like and subscribe and send us burritos. This week's analytical music theory analysis of the week is Potato by Mike Keneally from his 1997 album Sluggo. And we're going to examine what I'm calling the pre-chorus, which I consider to be 2.5 bars long, or two bars of 4-4 and one bar of 2-4. On the surface, this is a fun, lighthearted, straightforward pop song. It's got catchy, diatonic verses and a mandatory sing-along chorus. But in between, there's a pre-chorus with a sequence of tense chords. And it reminds me a bit of what he did with those non-diatonic chords on his song Live in Japan from the album Dancing. So I decided I need to understand what the heck is going on. And it turns out that figuring this one out by ear even after watching a performance of a song on YouTube, was beyond my capabilities. I sent my own video rendition of the guitar parts to Mr. Keneally, and I thought I was pretty close, but it turned out I was not. And thankfully, he gave me a video call, and he showed me each guitar chord in detail. So, disaster averted. So, let's get into it. For context, the verse is in the key of A mixolydian. And we don't spend a lot of time here, so very quickly the chords are A, D, F sharp minor, A, E minor, A, and D. And the notes in the melody being in A mixolydian are the same notes as D major. And overall, it's pretty consonant, and if you reduce it down, it's basically an A major sound. Now, we're going to jump ahead real quick to the chorus, and we're going to say that chorus is in the key of A major, because it uses the chords F sharp, D, and E. That would be the 6, 4, and 5 does that three times, and then it switches to A, D, and E, which are the one, four, and five chords. And then it returns cleanly to that verse, which is also rooted in A. And that's just so you understand that the verse and chorus are both very tonal. And aside from that little Mixolydian flavor in the verse, It's total pop songwriting, but in between those two slices of white bread is some stinky cheese. This pre-chorus doesn't seem to be in a single diatonic key because what chords do we have here? We've got C over B, B minor seven, G five, and then B flat, C over B flat, A over G, D over E, and then E over D. So if you collected all of the notes from that sequence and make a scale out of them, you'd have a 10 note scale going C, D, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B flat, and B. So if it had a C sharp and a D sharp, it would be fully chromatic. Anyway, that's all to say that there's no way this is in a single diatonic key. Now let's look at those chords. Most of them are slash chords. And in this case, it's putting a non-chord tone in the bass. 
Measure one starts with a C over B, which is mysterious and tense sounding. And when he showed it to me, I immediately said, ah, that Phrygian thing. But it's not an easy chord to play on the guitar. He's playing a C bar chord at the eighth fret, but dropping the bar down to the seventh fret. And then he moves down to a B minor seven at the seventh fret. And those two chords are followed by a rock and roll G chord played Angus Young style. Now those three chords together could be considered to be in the key of G. But this is all moving so quick, it doesn't really establish a key center. And that's measure one. Measure two starts with a B flat major chord in root position. There's a little bass voice movement with the notes F and E happening there under it. The F would be a five, and the E would be a sharp four. So there's the tiniest Lydian moment happening. And that's followed by a C over B flat, which has its own Lydian sound. And then he moves that exact chord shape down in parallel motion, three half steps to A over G. And he made a point to explain that he hits an open A string right after that. And then he moves up to a D over E, which is like a D chord with a nine in the bass. And in measure three, he reverses that concept, E over D, which is an E chord with a D in the bass. And that's another Lydian moment. And that's the entire 10 beats, or 2.5 measures, leading to the chorus, which lands on an F sharp minor chord. Now, here's one way to make sense of this whole chord sequence, starting with the B flat chord in measure two. That B flat, with that little F bass motion, and C chord, could be outlining the four, one, five in F. And then the next three chords could be outlining the one, four, five in A. If you remove the bass notes, the triads on top are A, D, and E. One, four, five. Which then perfectly resolves to the F sharp minor in the chorus, and that is a classical deceptive cadence from five to six. And I have none idea if this is what Keneally was thinking, but I hope to have him on the podcast soon, and I will be sure to ask him about it. So here's my creative takeaway from Mike Keneally's song, Potato. If you've written a song with a very consonant and happy verse and chorus, why not throw in a little bit of non-diatonic tension in between? As Mr. Keneally demonstrates, even 2.5 measures of chromatic dissonance does the job. And be sure to check out the entire Sluggo album, as well as his recently released The Thing That Knowledge Can't Eat, and I will put links to purchase those albums in the show notes. Okay, that's it for this week's Analytical Music Theory Analysis of the Week. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, and send us burritos and support the creation of more by joining my Patreon for $1 or $5 a month. That's patreon.com slash Carl King. <laughs> <laughs>